uh, good evening uh, all of you i'm very happy to see happy faces <laughs> uh, really i'm very proud to have such uh, good uh, coordinators and faculties for the kerala ira session it is going on very well from january onwards and we have uh, come nearly to end of all the systems and we are going to the exterior of the uh, systems uh so very happy and today we are going to deal with our msk i think uh, we are in the last but one week doing msk sessions and they have good participation of all the faculties so i take this opportunity uh to invite uh, our uh, main uh, expert faculty dr ishibi paul uh dr tara who is academic coordinator dr venu who is our academic chairman dr shenoy who is our program coordinator and at last rijo is a secretary i welcome all of them i take this opportunity to welcome the delegates who are listening i think they are the most important uh, part of our academic session so i invite the residents for this uh, session and invite dr amrita and dr sumitra uh, is it sumitra or uh, anybody shruti shruti okay for this session who is going to uh, do the case presentation with dr cb so i welcome each and every one and take this program that is academic session to the heart because it is very important and exam oriented which will be very helpful for exams over to you to the platform dr tara who is our uh, uh, moderator of the session today over to you tara uh, so i welcome all of you to the academic pg case presentation conducted by ira academic session 2022 so the faculty for today is uh, dr shibhi she dr shibhi paul is our own consultant at bps lakeshore hospital kochi and uh, she has done her pg from the prestigious um, institute christian medical college bellur and she has been a faculty there for long and uh, she is an excellent academician with a keen interest in teaching i invite her to the session and we also have with us two residents dr amrita who is a final year resident and dr shruti who has done her dmrd from grand government medical college mumbai so i invite uh, dr shivi paul to take over the session so we have a few cases and followed by spotters i'm sure it will be useful to all and Uh, so i can find many pgs over here so i welcome them all to the session and uh, to shivi to please take over the session uh, thank you ma'am we we'll go to the case presentations first by the pgs um, dr amrita or dr shruti can you uh, start the presentation please uh, good evening all so uh, my first case uh, a 41 year old male patient presented with pain and swelling in left thigh so uh, we had done a plain radiograph ap and lateral view uh, left thigh in the plain uh, ap view we can see mixed lytic sclerotic reaction with the uh, uh, permeate kind of bony erosion there is a lytic area here at the metaphysis in the lateral view we can see the lytic area here in the posterior aspect of femur also there is white zone of transition so coming uh, to in order to look for the bony matrices uh, uh, lesion matrix we have we have done a ct for this patient these are the actual ct images showing lytic sclerotic reaction also there is interrupted periosteal reaction which was also seen in the plain x ray this represent intramedullary cystostom this is a bony uh, lytic area the bony defect uh, we saw in the plain x ray there is also soft tissue extension in the left thigh there is another lytic area in the anterolateral aspect of left femoral condyle so no evidence of any uh, bony uh, cartilaginous or osteoid matrix seen so the patient underwent a mri left thigh and this these are the t2 weighted fat set images there is heterogeneous intermediate to high signal lesion in the intramedullary cavity of the mid and lower third of femur and there is a bony defect in the posterior cortex and there is extraosseous extension of the lesion which is seen circumferentially around the femur there is also inflammatory feathery edema in the anterior and posterior compartment muscle mild joint effusion is also seen these are the actual images t2 fat set showing 
intermedullary T2, uh, intermediate to high signal intensity lesion, and the exosseous circumferential component of the lesion. These are the popliteal artery and the vein. The fat plane between them is maintained. The le inferiorly, the lesion extends up to the roof of popliteal fossa. Even weighted images, coronal images show hypointense intramedullary lesion with a circumferential exosseous component. This was the diffusion weighted images uh, and corresponding AVDC maps showing intense homogeneous diffusion restriction of the exosseous component. Post contrast axial images showing enhancing enhancement in the intramedullary lesion and the exosseous extension of the lesion. So the coronal image showing heterogeneous enhancement of the intermedullary and the exosseous component. So in this 41-year-old uh, male patient presented with uh, knee pain, uh, left thigh swelling and pain, uh, considering the imaging features, uh, we have to uh, consider a primary malignant bone lesion as prime uh, first TD. The imaging uh, features uh, are more favorable for a, a primary bone lymphoma. Then other differentials to be considered are a marrow proliferative disorders. Uh, then uh, metastasis is another DD. Hi, Dr. Shruti, nice presentation. Can you go back to the plain radiograph, please? Yes, ma'am. Um, can you give a full description of the radiograph uh, for the sake of a uh, fellow? Uh, this is a plain uh, AP and lateral uh, X ray of uh, left thigh, including the knee joint. There is mixed lipid sclerotic reaction with permeative kind of. Uh, uh, erosion and uh, zone of transition and there is interrupted periosteal reaction seen here also here the joint spaces are uh, appears normal there's another lipic area here in the ap view and corresponding lateral view represents a posterior lipic area in the posterior cortex mm. Anything more? Uh, there is a soft tissue, soft tissue uh, thickening in the uh, distal aspect of femur. For exam sake, uh, Lord prefer to give up, um, especially for MSK cases, in the plain radiogram itself, give a complete description, even though we know what's happening, rather than uh, pointing out, saying, uh, for example, saying like it's an ill defined. Lytic, mixed lytic sclerotic lesion in the uh, distal epimetadiaphyseal location, distal femur, with uh, some permeative lytic uh, areas are there, and uh, there's a large lo loosened areas, and there is a uh, periosteal reaction. Uh, cort and co uh, if there's any cortical um, breach evident, you can say that, and there's, uh, in this case, you can see large soft tissue component obscuring the lateral radiograph obscuring the fat planes and projecting into the suprapetalar bursa and also posteriorly obscuring the fat planes. So we can uh, offer a little bit more descript description and based on this radiograph, you can point towards saying that, in, especially in MSK, if it's a uh, bone uh, tumor or something of that kind we are seeing, whether it's an aggressive lesion or a uh, non-aggressive lesion, initially based on the radiograph itself. So what would you say further? So uh, according to the uh, plain radiograph findings, uh, the lesion is more uh, aggressive bone lesion, primary bone, bone lesion, or it can also be uh, infection like osteomyelitis with chronic osteo, especially chronic, chronic osteomyelitis. That's where you see more of a, a sclerosis. Um, and what is the role of MRI? MRI, uh, this exosseous, uh, we can assess the extent uh, of exosseous component where it's in that uh, extent, articular involvement, also the neurovascular involvement, whether it is involving the neurovascular bundle and uh, the marrow edema, the marrow involvement, uh, and also. So in this case, uh, what involvement was that? Other uh, thing that if you want to, if this was any other lesion and if the orthopedicians are looking at it, uh, 
they would want to look at the joint involvement, right? Joint so this is already involving the uh, suprapetalar bursa. Mm -hmm. So that is one thing you can highlight, uh, especially since you're on. Other thing, uh, if, when you're, if you're planning this MRA, what do you do tell the MRA technician, like uh, how much will you take? What will be your... Uh, it should include the uh, one proximal joint. The joint distally. Uh, one joint distally. Proximal and distal joint. Just look at any skip lesions and uh, what is the length of. Uh, they want to see what is a uh, from any, uh, for example, if it's femur, how many bony prominence, how much marrow involvement is there, how much of the, what's the extent of soft, distance of soft tissue involvement for the surgical planning. Based on the, um, uh, after you said MRA, what are the pointing, points favoring lymphoma and what are the points favoring metastasis in this case? Uh, the intense uh, homogeneous diffusion restriction uh, shows high cellularity, which favors uh, lymphoma. Yeah. Uh, then a soft tissue is also showing homogeneous signal intensity. Uh, means exhaustion soft tissue component is showing so homogeneous signal intensity, which also favors uh, lymphoma. Mm. Then uh, age group is also it's a higher age, age group, right? Yeah. Then, uh, Age group is higher, age group, uh, uh, not the common um, other, for example, osteogenic sarcoma or other lesions. It's, it's a higher age group. And uh, in anything else, what about the metrics? Anything about the metrics? Uh, there is a permeative pattern, permeative pattern, which is seen in infiltrative condition, lymphoma, and in other infiltrative conditions. It can also be seen. Well, Osteo, multiple oh. osteo and osteo. Uh, what is one thing against against uh, lymphoma larger bony defect last cortical bony defect we don't uh, usually see in lymphoma Lymph usually there is any uh, no uh, significant defects but there will be large soft tissue involvement will be there that is one of the things. what is the commonest uh, what all uh, metastasis can occur lytic sclerotic uh, in uh, lytic, there is a uh, breast or uh, renal cell carcinoma. Uh, then colonic, gastric, gastrointestinal tract, gastrointestinal RCC. What is, the, what is the commonest lymphoma which involves the bone? It's a primary lymphoma. Uh, it's non Hodgkin's type, mostly the diffuse large B cell type. Large B cell. Um, so, for this patient, I think biopsy was done and it was proven to be diffuse large uh, B cell lymphoma. lymphoma. Um, shall we go on to the next case? Madam Gomadi, madam, do we need any more discussion on the plain radiograph, madam? I think Madam is not there. So I think. Uh, I think uh, we will continue with the discussion. One thing I would like to add myeloma metastases are like differential for most of the um, lesions in bone lesions in adult age group. In this case, it can't be because of the sclerotic uh, matrix. So, age is the first thing you look age and location of the lesion. That's the first thing you looking at when you are uh, trying to give a differential for a bone lesion. Shall we go on to the next case, Dr. Shruti? Slide visible, ma'am. Yes. Moving on to the second case. It's a 37-year-old gentleman presented with right pain and swelling. So this is a lateral radiograph of uh, right and left knee. In the right knee, there is a fullness in the supra petala region. This AP radiograph of right and left knee. There is a diffuse osteopenia noted on the right side as compared to the left side. The joint spaces are uh, maintained. There is no obvious evidence of any cortical erosion or any uh, periosteal reaction. No obvious uh, soft tissue component in the uh, AP view. So the patient underwent MRI right knee joint. So it's a seven weighted coronal images. So we can see variable lobulated and nodular T 
prevent hypo intense lesions around in the intraarticular surface and around the knee joint there is also lesion in the uh, uh, superior uh, tibial plateau with scalloping bony scalloping these are the t2 weighted images showing diffuse synovial thickening involving the patella femoral joint articular surface there is nodular synovial thickening there is also heterogeneous uh, lobulated lesion in the posterior aspect of uh, femur that is in the popliteal fossa we can uh, also see the lesion, uh, similar lesions in the along the cruciate ligament in the patella uh, femoral tibial joint space and there is bony scalloping there is another intramedullary well defined lesion in the metaphyses of femur no evidence of any ob obvious marrow edema these are the t2 fat set images showing cystic component within the lobulated intraarticular and periarticular lesions actually images showing the same findings nodular and lobulated thickening around the synovial membrane the petal of femoral articular synovium the popliteal vessels show uh, the fat line with the popliteal vessels are maintained so genital gradient images showing intense blooming artifact within the synovial thickening all the lesions are showing bloom susceptibility artifacts so the image findings are features are typical for pigmented villonodular synovitis villonodular synovitis so think could you go back to the plain radiograph please um so in this we have seen the uh, soft tissue swelling um or opacity opacification uh, and uh, can you go the next ap radiograph please okay uh, so can you see anything else in this uh the bony uh, there is diffuse osteopenia on right side compared to left rather than diffuse probably or like a periarticular osteopenia around the joint maybe because of uh, i don't know what the patient present with the pain or something and uh, uh, retrospectively uh, there is an erosion a there is a definite erosion, yeah, yeah. A definite erosion yeah. so in this pain radical which do you want to say something do you, what do you see probably some effusion or some synovial pathology or something in the joint and you are seeing some erosion uh, so what are the possible uh, uh, conditions you are thinking of uh, can be any infection infected uh, osteomyelitis from diffusion and mun erosion you are not seeing any large lytic area um, in the metaphyses or anything of the sort so more of a like a joint infection right? chronic inflammatory conditions also uh, inflammatory condition joint uh, uh, any joint infection which can cause er with erosions inflammatory conditions although the erosion is in the um, little uh, close to intercondylar nodes and then of course other conditions requisite pvns anything else uh, metastasis into the joint so much of uh, synovial simple something which will cause uh, effusion or some synovial fullness and erosion synovial chondromatosis right so what are you going to say sorry uh, okay other things synovial chondromatosis lipoma arborans many things can be there like in lipoma arborans there is no erosions or all the other conditions there will be some erosions so mode uh, if, if it's a monoarticular involvement uh, based on clinical history if there is no other clinical relevant clinical history of other uh, joint involvement we'll have to go ahead with the mri and this mri what is the specific uh, uh, sequence which uh, what are the um, uh, uh, sites which indicated that more towards a pvns gradient uh, gradient sequence without gradient sequence will you be able to make the uh, will you be able to suspect do we do gradient sequence uh, for all 
a typical appearance of synovial thickening and the nodular lesions. Uh, the T two hypoindens lesions are dark. T two hypoindens, which is a little unusual with other synovial infections. Uh, synovial thickening occurs with infections and inflammatory areas, and there is not much of uh, erosions apart from that um, one small erosion which we saw in the anterior uh, intercondylar intercondylar region. Uh, so the T two hypoindens lesions, synovial thickening, and the um, blooming and gradient sequence. So Srutti, like you know, if you can you tell me? Yes. Uh, uh, please carry on. Uh, the other uh, conditions. Uh, what what else can you see? In the, what are the plain plain radiograph? Findings you can look towards other conditions. Um, in synovial uh, chondromatosis, uh, we will get um, more uniform sized loose bodies around the joint. Is that in primary or secondary? Uh, primary. Primary. What will happen? There will be synovial hyperplasia. So initially there will be cartilaginous bodies which will detach and uh, then uh, ossified and becomes loose bodies. There is in secondary, it's, uh, uh, secondary to some degenerative condition, and there will be a less less number of loose bodies, and it will be on uh, varying shape. Okay, ma'am. Um, ma you were saying? Uh, you know, I was just asking, uh, Shruti, like if it is an infective etiology with the uh, erosion and periarticular osteopenia, what is the um, etiology that you would consider first? If infected with periarticular osteopenia and erosions. Tuberculosis. Yeah, that uh, we should think about it with periarticular osteopenia and joint erosions and unilater unilateral involvement. Of course, you have to correlate with the clinical findings. I think, I think what we have shown is a very classic case because like, you know, we have the MR images with this, but with the radiograph, I think uh, the diagnosis is a little difficult. So, except for the joint erosion and the periarticular osteopenia, I think like, you know, there aren't much findings and it may be difficult to make the diagnosis. And in pigmented villanodular synovitis, uh, we need not see the uh, erosions or indentation all the time, especially in uh, knee joint. They say like, you know, if it is a loose compartment, like, you know, it may not cause the synovitis and uh, uh, the synovial proliferation may not cause the cortical erosion, but it is very common, like, you know, if the joint compartment is very tight. So, if there are no more questions, I think we'll move on to the next case. Going to the next case. This is a 26-year-old male patient presented with swelling of right forearm since last seven years and gradually increasing in size. Plain radiograph of right forearm was taken. So, radiograph of right forearm, AP and lateral view. Which shows cortic cortical based lesion involving the right ulnar diaphysis along the medial border of proximal shaft of right ulna. And the lesion has a broad base and there is mild cortical irregularities along the outer cortex. And the outer margin of the lesion is poorly defined with mild extra soft tissue. And the lesion shows osseous matrix, and also multi-lamellated interrupted periosteal reaction. And also there is an elevated periosteum seen here along the superior aspect of the lesion. The medullary cavity appears normal on plain radiograph. Rest of the visualized bones appears normal. No focal lesions are seen in radius and distal humerus. Right elbow appears normal. So on plain radiograph, uh, considering the age of the patient, this is a surface osteosarcoma. Following which an MRI was done, MRI right forearm. This is the act 
ടി വൺ വെയ്റ്റഡ് ഇമേജസ് ഷോസ് ലോബിലേറ്റഡ് എക്സോഫൈറ്റിക് കോർട്ടിക്കൽ ബേസ്ഡ് ലീഷൻ ഇൻവോൾവിംഗ് ദ മീഡിയൽ ആൻഡ് പോസ്റ്റീരിയർ കോർട്ടിക്സ് ഓഫ് റൈറ്റ് അൾനാർ ഡയോഫൈസസ് വിത്ത് എക്സ്ട്രാ ഓഷ്യസ് ഓഫ് ടിഷ്യൂ the cortical irregularities are visualized here and few t1 hypointense areas are also seen within the lesion and along the superior aspect there is a t1 hyperintense area noted likely representing a post biopsy hematoma also the biopsy track can be seen here with stranding in the subcutaneous region so axial t1 fat saturated images showing the cortical base lesion so t1 iso intense and the t1 hyper intensity is persisting in t1 fs image showing the hematoma so the axial t2 fat saturated images showing t2 heterogeneous signal lesion and t2 hyper intense signal change is noted in the surrounding flexor muscles the forearm and also it is extending medially and abutting the interosseous membrane this is diffusion weighted images and few areas of diffusion restriction can be seen within the lesion and this is the axial t1 post contrast images showing heterogeneous post contrast enhancement of the lesion and heterogeneous enhancing extra osseous soft tissue and the lesion is seen infiltrating the flexor group of flexor muscles of the forearm involving the flexor carpi ulnaris flexor digitorum profundus and anconius and also there is mild enhancement of the medullary cavity is also seen post contrast images the neurovascular bundles is away from the lesion there is no involvement of neuromuscular bundles and also the lesion is away from the elbow joint no joint involvement and no other skip lesions are visualized so mri confirms the diagnosis of a surface osteosarcoma considering the age of the patient thank you thank you dr amrita um, so we said about the age of the patient so what uh, uh, can you go back to the plain radiograph please uh, so what are the types of uh, as you said it's a cortical based lesion uh, and so there's some osseous matrix periosteal reaction is there uh, so what are the types of uh, surface osteosarcomas that you know of uh, surface osteosarcomas include parosteal periosteal and high grade uh, surface osteosarcomas so are there any points in this are there any features or findings in this radiograph which would favor one um, one of so, this Uh, so the uh, uh it's most likely a parosteal osteosarcoma uh, it can also be periosteal uh, it is difficult to differentiate so how do how do you differentiate between uh, uh, the periosteal any bone lesions first would be age age can be a little bit of overlapping here uh, periosteal will be little uh, 15 to 30 years periosteal will be little higher age little bit of higher age compared to the parosteal third decade whereas uh, parosteal is second decade crossing over to the early third decade continue please and periosteal osteosarcoma the most common size is the diaphysis whereas parosteal it usually involves the metaphysis metaphysis and uh, it is an intermediate grade tumor in the case of periosteal but as it is low grade okay uh, more of pathology like uh, radiologically and uh, the periosteal reaction 
perpendicular aggressive periosteal reaction favors a periosteal osteosarcoma rather than a parosteal may so, correspond so. with the pathology of the intermediate grape perpendicular to the bone or aggressive uh, yes. perpendicular to the bone periosteal reaction what about parosteal osteosarcoma and we can see a cle uh, cleft between the tumor and the bone that is string sign can be visualized in a parosteal osteosarcoma uh, so do you need to necessarily we not need not necessarily see it in the uh, radiograph sometimes we may have to admit so uh, better visible on a ct that is a lucent cleavage line because uh, pe pe parosteal osteosarcoma is from the outer cortex there is a uh, periosteal is from, uh, from the inner subgerminal layer of uh, uh, periosteum so there is usually some aggressive periosteal reaction so so this may be more of like a periosteal osteosarcoma rather than a parosteal osteosarcoma looks like there in the proximal aspect there is some um, subperiosteal elevation yes. there is an interrupted periosteal reaction is there whereas in parosteal is more of a dense osseous component and uh, this is an, uh, seen in diaphysis uh, what about the uh, other findings on uh, mri do you expect to see anything additional additional uh, findings in mri in this case ma'am uh, no periosteal versus parosteal uh, you are saying that uh, this is in the cortex and uh, no nothing discernible on the medulla no lesion discernible in the medulla on radiograph medulla involvement is uh, usually seen in periosteal osteosarcoma medulla the other way on parosteal for some reason that medullary involvement is more common this periosteal it is not seen parosteal and high grade surface osteosarcoma and of course you want to see the neurovascular structures in this case uh, what are the other cortical base lesions so uh, in the first case uh, which dr shruti present was an intramedullary lesion so this is a cortical base lesion right what are the other cortical base lesion or uh, cortical lesions that you know of uh osteochondroma then osteoderosteoma uh, non ossifying fibroma then fibrous cortical defect okay, and uh, extra cortical lesions extra cortical chondroma and con uh, chondrosarcoma just like oste osteosarcoma there is chondroma chondrosarcoma there can be a lipoma is there parosteal lipoma so here uh, the periosteal reaction location and matrix one towards the surface osteosarcoma what are the types of uh, periosteal reaction benign and aggressive no aggressive and non aggressive periosteal reaction periosteal reaction can be solid unilamellated or multilamellated then uh, speculated speculated can be perpendicular sunburst then codman triangle So solid lamellated is more common in a uh, non-aggressive tumors. Solid. Unilamellar. Yes, unilamellar. Okay. What about aggressive? Aggressive periosteal reaction. Aggressive can be interrupted, multi-lamellated, then sunburst, speculated, perpendicular Tear periosteal. Tear on and perpendicular. Okay, uh, ma'am. Uh, Amrita, do you have any DDs, you know, on this radiograph? So this radiograph shows a cortical-based tumor, and it's also showing an aggressive tumor due to the poorly defined margin and extraosseous soft tissue and periosteal reaction. So in this age group, uh, can only uh, the main diagnosis is a surface osteosarcoma, aggressive tumor. If it is an older age group, uh, what will you think of? Rarely, cortical-based metastasis can be there. So, what do you call the involvement of? Uh, there is a sign for that, no? What do you uh, call it? Like, if it is a metastasis causing a cortical involvement. Do you have any specific name for that?
So what is a cookie bite lesion? In the case of metastasis, uh, yeah, you see a cortical erosion and another DD, I think you have to consider in an older age group is a fibrosarcoma. That is a predominant uh, lesion with the uh, predominant soft tissue lesion with cortical indentation. I think in older age group, you got to think about it. And for the benefit of the PGs, like, you know, you said it's a cortical based lesion and uh, what we have shown initially, what Dr. Sruti presented initially, it's an intramedullary lesion. So that was also a rare case. And for the benefit of the PGs who are attending the session, can you tell us how to differentiate between a cortical based lesion and an intramedullary lesion? Amrita, are you online? Yes, ma'am. Cortical base lesion involves the uh, cortex of the bone with uh, and the medullary cavity will be normal, no extension to the medullary cavity and yeah, the, you have to have a look at two views provided. So for any bone lesion, you need to have two views and then you need to look into that. Yes, uh, Shipi, do you have any other points to add? Cortical expansion. Uh, intracortical expansion compared to uh, scalloping of the um, inner cortex in intramedullary lesion. Yes. Then, of course, epicenter. Yes, I think uh, so. Those are the important points to differentiate a cortical base lesion from an intramedullary lesion. And uh, if it is an intramedullary lesion, um, you say, like if there is medullary involvement and uh, with periosteal thickening at this age group, what other lesion would you think of? medullary lesion ma'am yeah if it is uh, my medullary lesion because sometimes it is hard on uh, radiographs to differentiate between a cortical lesion and an intramedullary lesion so also an early stage of uh, another lesion like you know which is the commonest uh, diaphyseal lesion at this age group in a younger age group a little more younger age group i would say having sarcoma yeah i think that is more common than um, uh, the osteosarcoma uh, what is the commonest site of osteosarcoma uh, uh, conventional osteosarcoma that is long bones, femur, tibia, the yeah. iron usually. And um, uh, what is the age group of osteosarcoma? Uh, con uh, conventional osteosarcoma age group is 10 to 20, uh, 25 years. Yes. Whereas uh, surface osteosarcoma is uh, a higher age group that is uh, second or third decade. Yes, and evenings. Uh, 10 to 20 years. As Dr. said, there is an overlap over here between the age group. So uh, I think like, you know, uh, I think that is another DD that you can consider. Like if you're not very sure if it's a purely cortical lesion, that is, I think, the commonest thing that you should consider. Evings tumor. And then you can uh, clarify it better on MRI. I think we can move on to our next case, fourth case for today. So moving to the next case, this is a 72-year-old male patient presented with low back pain radiating to left lower limb. Following which a plain radiograph of uh, pelvis was taken. The plain radiograph pe uh, pelvis frontal view shows mixed lytic sclerotic lesion involving the left acetabulum and left ischiotropic ramus. And the lesion shows a wide zone of transition. And also there is an uh, extortious soft tissue seen inferiorly with a few scattered calcifications within the lesion. And there is blurring of ilio line on left side with mild sclerosis. On the opposite side, the ilio line is uh, sharp, whereas it's blurred on left side. The matrix calcification is not well delineated on plain radiograph. On the right side, the ilium, uh, the inner in bone right side appears normal. So, uh, 
there is an aggressive lesion involving the left innominate bone. Considering the age of the patient, the differential diagnosis will be uh, metastasis and chondrosarcoma. MRI was done. MRI. So coronal T1 weighted images. Showing a large destructive lesion involving the left innominate bones. This is K1 hypoindence, isotope hypoindence, with large K1 isotope hypoindence extraosseous soft tissue. This is the axial T2 fat images showing the marked T2 hyperindence signal involving the lesion and the soft tissue. This is the diffusion weighted images which shows few areas of diffusion restriction. And this is the axial post-contrast T1 weighted images showing the heterogeneous post-contrast enhancement of the lesion with large extra soft tissue. So the, loft, the, the soft tissue is seen infiltrating the left pelvic sidewall muscles. Medially, the lesion is extending to the retroperitoneum, infiltrating the left iliopsoas muscle and infiltrating the left external iliac vessels and causing mass effect on the pelvic organs, the urinary bladder, prostate, the rectum is displaced and anteriorly it is infiltrating the left adductor muscles posteriorly extending to the left gluteal region, infiltrating the gluteus muscles. And it's also stretching the left uh, sciatic nerve. The correlation CT of the pelvis was also done to look for the matrix. This is the axial CT sections of the pelvis, showing the destructive lesion with large extra soft tissue with ring and arc-like matrix calcification within the lesion, confirming a chondroid matrix. Also, the cortical destruction can also be seen here, involving the left acetabulum. Left digestant also seen here. So considering the MR and CT findings, and considering the age, the diagnosis is a chondrosarcoma involving the left innominate bones. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Amrita. Can you could you go back to the plain data graph, please? So just one more observation here. Uh, in the left acetabulum, if you see the right as, uh, acetabulum, roof of the acetabulum, there is a nice thick cortex is, uh, rim is well seen, whereas it's uh, uh, thinned out on left side. Um, okay, um, so what are all the uh, pelvic lesions in adults, elderly or older age group? Uh, this is a uh, chondrosarcoma, then, uh, in, met then metastasis. Chondrosarcoma, metastasis, anything else? Then uh, lymphoma. You have not seen the calcifications. Okay, lymphoma then, also can. And, okay. yes. Plasma cytoma, sorry, myeloma, plasma cytoma. Yes. Can be, um, those can uh, uh, seen in older age group. What about younger age group, if you see? Pelvic lesions in younger. Pelvic lesions. The commonest one, is the commonest. Aggressive lesion, commonest aggressive lesion. If you have not seen that uh, matrix, if there is just a bone lesion and a soft tissue component. Children, uh, commonest uh, um, Evings. Evings, sarcoma. Evings sarcoma. Then cord and, uh, cordoma. Then cordoma. 
then codoma sacrococcal teratoma all those uh, around 40 years or so what, uh, another thing which you can see the gct gct which is usually see it can be usually seen in the uh, subarticular it can go to the sacroiliac joint subarticular location uh, what are the points uh, of um, pointing towards an aggressive lesion in this case so uh, there is wide zone of transition and extraction soft tissue is seen which favors an aggressive lesion on plane radiograph okay um, so but you are not able to discern the matrix on the plane radiograph uh, so ct ct so what type of calcification was it in the ct uh, ring and arc like ring and arc. what are other types of calcification which can be seen in chondroid matrix um, uh, popcorn like fluffy calcification felt calcifications um, so what's the common calcification of chondrosarcoma uh, common uh, location is long, long bones femur and tibia is again the most common be the commonest and then pelvic bones both be almost According to most of the cases. Uh, so, types of uh, chondrosarcoma can you? Uh, types, uh, it can, uh, it is classified into conventional and uh, primary and secondary. In primary, we have conventional, then juxtacortical, uh, clear cell, mixoid, extra osseous, then mesenchymal and differentiated. Whereas in secondary, you have a uh, secondary to uh, that is uh, osteochondroma and chondroma undergo malignant change, chondrosarcoma. Osteochondroma, uh, so um, how, when do you suspect a secondary transform, malignant transformation in osteochondroma? Osteochondroma, uh, first is the, uh, the thickness of the cartilaginous cap, more than 1.5 to 2 Demetrius, then uh, then uh, cortical destruction and extortion soft tissue, presence of extortion soft tissue, then bone scan. Follow up with the calcification is increasing. Calcifications in the chondroid part. Okay. If it's increasing, then that also would indicate. Uh, uh, chondrosarcoma. So this is another uh, common, uh, uh, so long bones and flat bones, uh, you know, especially pelvic bones, long bones, intramedullary lesion, cortical base lesion. Uh, description is very important, even though we know it to practice the description. We are uh, saying ill-defined, well-defined, Lytic sclerotic, mixed lytic sclerotic, then going about to the uh, matrix. If there is some discernible matrix, then wide, wide zone of or narrow zone of transition. Then you talk about the cortex, whether there's any cortical breach, then so uh, subperiosteal reactions, soft tissue component. Even though uh, we know it, uh, uh, it's better to uh, practice um, so that uh, uh, there is no interruption in uh, during the final exam. Especially age and location is important, as uh, Madam correctly told that uh, for the earlier cortical base lesion also. So, if a similar thing, uh, based on the age, refers to the location, then based on the age group at that location, what all differentials can can you consider? So that's how you should you should approach uh, a bone lesion in the exam. And uh, um, if you can't think of an uh, um, uh, for a uh, diagnosis. At least you should be able to say if there is any, uh, if it's a bone tumor or something, whether there is an aggressive or um, non-aggressive lesion, or whether you're considering anything, any other infection or anything as in Dr. Sruti's case. So um, you will always be able to uh, 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 arrive at some differential if you go uh, systematically. If you describe systematically itself in your mind itself, you will be able to form a uh, differential in your mind. So I think we have uh, discussed four cases and as uh, Dr. Shibi has said, 
the diagnosis should be made on a, a plain radiograph and the other modalities especially mr that is to describe the extent of the lesion and the neurovascular involvement and i think ct is very important to look for the matrix so uh, i think in, in the last case i think uh, the calcification matrix calcification in ct is so classic of the disease so that is how we should go about and the systematic approach is very important i think like you know we have few more spotters so i think we'll move on to the spotter session Dr. Shruti, maybe you can answer the first few spotters, then Dr. Amrita can answer. This is the first case. This extensive subcutaneous calcification uh, in the chest and the chest wall, and in bilateral uh, thigh um, pelvic region. It have uh, calcinosis, cutis, or is it just in the cutis or subcutaneous okay. also, right? Subcutaneous also. Um, dermatomyositis. Dermatomyositis. Uh, other, you, there are a lot of other conditions which can cause soft tissue calcination, like tumoral calcinosis, which can be seen around the joints, but there's usually some layering in there, calcium layering, sediment and sedimentation in there. And the rice grain seen in neurocystic sarcosis, musculoskeletal neurocystic sarcosis. So this is a dermatomyositis. And of course, myositis also becomes progressive. There will be uh, contractures and usually seen in the spine lateral radiograph. There's a classical uh, image shown in exams. The bamboo spine, ankylosing spondylitis. Are the signs demonstrated in this? Bamboo spine. Bamboo spine. That is a ligament ossification. Ligation. Yes. Yes. The are there. And what about the, what is the um, uh, first Bamboo. thing? Um, Yes, uh, what is the early thing which you, you want to, uh, this is a late stage, right, chronic stage. So uh, you can't do much to, uh, to the patient, much for the patient at this stage. So when you want to pick up early our clinicians, they will always be asking, look, looking for something and they'll be ordering imaging to look at something. So what is it? Shiny cup, or manifestations. These are all, uh, it can be seen that uh, depending on the inflammation, or the, the syndesmo, white annulus fibrosis attachment, if there is a, uh, inflammation, initially there will be edema, then it can go on to form sclerosis, that is a shiny corner sign. Uh, MRA, uh, our rheumatologist will always be asking for MRA whenever they present with low back pain to look at something. The earliest sign would be uh, bilateral symmetrical sacroiliitis. So there is sacroiliitis in this, there is periarticular sclerosis. Uh, so, when you're seeing the uh, uh, signs, uh, don't miss out on sacroiliitis also. So, these are the other signs which had correctly said in other locations, protrusia or setabli, that is the uh, medial or axial um, um, migration of the femoral head and vertebral body squaring, um, bamboo sign, dagger pain, which was seen in this patient. Next case. Uh, spry, uh, try. Uh, what is it? It is a bone dysplasia, right? It's a kind of dysplasia. Vertical stry are seen. Just a um, spot uh, usually Kevin. We don't get to see it very often in our uh, clinical. Uh, Take the digraph of uh, foot uh, AP view. Uh, there is cortical in the third metaphor, but it also there is cortical thickening and solid periosteal reaction is there. Periosteal reaction is there. Um, soft tissue extend, uh, soft tissue shadow is there. There is soft tissue shadow, but you can. What are you thinking of? Osteomyelitis. Uh, Osteomyelitis could be undifferentiable. 
Madhuri Kut. Sorry, I didn't hear that. So, what are the things which can cause? Uh, uh, we are just uh, where we can only see uh, mostly periosteal reaction. Initially, when we were uh, discussing Dr. Amrita's case, is that, uh, there can be some periosteal reaction or early aging sarcoma permeative pattern may not be visible on uh, radiograph. Other things which can cause periosteal reaction. This is a solid periosteal reaction, right? Any anything. Um, so, as you said, infections can cause periosteal reaction. Early osteomyelitis can cause. Also, stress fracture, things like stress fracture oh, yes. can cause a periosteal reaction. So, we are not seeing a line, but these are the things you should think of when you see just a periosteal reaction. Another thing, osteodosteoma, when you are seeing it in femur or um, any other bones, just periosteal reaction, we won't be able to see anything. So, stress fracture, osteodosteoma, osteomyelitis. So my letters uh, can be, uh, maybe we can, uh, uh, in the last differential. Okay. So stress fracture is commonly occurs in foot, right? So when there is abnormal stress and you are more active on a normal bone, whereas insufficiency fracture is a uh, you, um, normal stress on abnormal bone, when the bone is already osteopenic or, or there is an, some degenerative changes, you get insufficiency fracture. Uh, so just to... Um, I thought I'll just, uh, I'm not shown in case as a radiograph showing the other thing. So stress fracture usually occurs in diaphysis as is seen in this case. Whereas in Jones fracture is usually, you can see that this is a uh, intertarsal line. It is at the level of intertarsal line, Jones fracture. Avulsion fracture happens just proximal to the intertarsal line, this pink area, proximal to the intertarsal line, avulsion fracture. Um, apophysis also can occur, that can be a normal variant. Apophysis, you will see a loosened line parallel to the shaft, whereas all the fractures are seen transversely. So this is the next case. Maybe uh, can add a radiograph. Radiograph showing. The lytic sclerotic reaction with the uh, uh, white zone transition. Uh, so, this is a um, radiograph skeletally mature patient, and you can see a well defined lesion with a sclerotic border. And there is some, it's not like this is a normal bone, so it is a little um, brighter or a little bit poorer. Um, uh, there is a um, brighter compared to the adjacent uh, marrow. So not exactly clear. This is a, a, a ground glass matrix. There's Fibrous. a fuzzy fibrous dysplasia. And what is this second? This is a sagittal view. Simple bones first. This species can have like a little bit of variable appearance. Uh, so what is this? Is this outside or inside? Outside. Uh, it's a soft, a massive broad syndrome with a soft tissue myxoma. Um, the fibrous dysplasia either that ground glass matrix we can uh, uh, sort of um, make out on a plain radiograph and sometimes on CT, MR, the hyperintensity can, uh, level of hyperintensity can vary a bit. Uh, so fibrous dysplasia, uh, there are a lot of um, uh, syndromes associated, so you should know all that syndrome. This is a soft tissue myxoma. And it is important because it has an increased risk of osseous malignant transformation. So as you know, that FD can predispose to malignant transformation, right? Uh, Dr. Amrita can, can take this next case. Yes, 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 ma'am. So, when in exam, you can, uh, if you're given this, you can start talking. This is the plain radiograph of both knee in a skeletally mature patient or a child. 
the uh, plain radiograph uh, of knee of uh, this frontal view frontal view the skeletally immature work plates can be seen there is a sclerot dense sclerotic area involved in the the face it's a dense uh, sclerotic dense metaphyseal band which uh, can be seen in a lot of conditions like poisoning treated leukemia healing rickets like the rickets you should expect to see more of some metaphyseal irregularity and all that which is not seen in this case so this is just what we see in a chapman uh, spotters if you see that multiple differentials for a dense metaphyseal band mm -hmm. the radiograph of the right knee frontal and lateral view There, there is a sclerotic lesion involving the devices of the proximal tibia. So what are the epiphyseal lesions that you know? Epiphyseal lesions, uh, chondroblastoma, dental tumor. Aneurysmal bone cells. Aneurysmal bone cells. Osteomyelitis sometimes can those commonly seen in um, metaphyses can sometimes occur. Geode, interosseous ganglion, ganglion cyst, subarticular. the CT. It's a light equation with a sclerotic border. Uh, not audible. CT enrol is usually less well demarcated. This is uh, so, uh, chondroblastoma. Basically, that's recognized that uh, always look at a uh, Skeleton of the patient. Um, your voice is breaking. Oh, sorry. Um, always, uh, when you're describing radiography, especially MSP cases, always say skeletal radiography or skeletal image of patient. Of course, a set of difference you're going to say vary based on that. In MRI, you can see edema, reactive edema, other things which can cause edema. Um, are we audible? Better than before, Shudhi. Much better than before. It was breaking in between, but I think it is fine. Uh, is my screen visible, ma'am? No. Yeah. No, no. Mm. For the... No, no. It so, so, saying, always look at the when you are saying vision, always look at whether the, the radiograph is which is given is of a skeletally mature patient or immature patient. Differentials vary based on that. Shall I go, just quickly show the cases because of the um, time constraint, ma'am? Uh, sure, sure, sure. You can show the cases and describe, Shibi. So this is, a, um, again, this is a skeletally mature child. And you can see the both side radiographs are given, lateral radiographs, and so that you can compare. And you can see something asymmetric here. This septipity process is irregular and fragmented. So this is osgood shatler disease, so it's, uh, shown in a zoom image here. And uh, this is a case where you can see there's a well-defined lesion, expansive lesion, with the, um, the, the ossifications with, within. Uh, uh, so it, this is in the maxillary bone. So we only can uh, give some differentials. So um, in uh, fibrous dysplasia can appear like this. There is some um, suspicion of some ground glass matrix here. We can, there's some conditional cement ossifying fibroma. Which can also have can have similar picture. There are very few specific lesions. I mean, very few conditions are seen in uh, maxilla. Um, so this is a, a case of uh, traverse disease, dysphasia, epiphyseal and semipelica, usually seen in one limb of the bone. You can see there is a little bit of if you look at the um, condyle here, the articular surface. There is a little bit of overgrowth is there. And there is a little bit of ossification here. So 
So sometimes it can be as subtle as this, or sometimes it can be very, very evident like this. So when is there is a cartilaginous lesion which is growing into the joint. So this is uh, um, very rarely seen. Other thing is osteochondro. If it's osteochondro, it will be seen away from the joint, as opposed to uh, a traverse which will grow into the joint. So this is just to show you an osseal osteochondroma with the corticomedullary continuity. And as I have discussed earlier, cartilaginous gap more than 1.5 centimeter indicates a uh, uh, causes uh, raises concern for a malignant transformation. And uh, there are multiple conditions with uh, association with syndrome, which should know continuous C sign seen in a uh, tallow calcaneal coalition, uh, whereas these two bones are fused together. That's why we are seeing the cortex um, um, together. We are not seeing a break in the cortex. So again, Sufi sign. So line of clean within the left side, if you see, if I draw a line from the lateral part of femur, it doesn't intersect the femoral head. So there is a slipped femoral uh, epiphysis in the left side. And MRI, clinicians always ask for MRI because uh, to look at the pre-slip, uh, we will be only able to see edema in the early stages of pre-slip in the opposite stage. And the problem view is uh, asked specifically to look at the, um, to exaggerate the slipped epiphysis. Um, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. This end of my supporters. Thank you so much, Shibi. And uh, uh, Dr. Gomadi, ma'am, are you here? Shall we wind up the session? Yeah, yeah, it was really wonderful. See, such a lot of cases the students are seeing. Uh, most of the residents will not get chance to get so many cases to see. I think they all of them should utilize this because we are taking so much pains to show them all these cases. Uh, so I think uh, uh, it was really, really wonderful to see such beautiful cases. All the cases are very beautiful. Uh, I was uh, seeing so many cases you have in your hospital. That's what I was wondering. So many MSK cases. All are really spotters and cases also. Thank you so much, uh, Shibi, for presenting. And Amrita and Shruti for doing such wonderful performance. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you. Uh, Tara, <laughs> uh, for moderating the session also. Thank you so much. I welcome, you all to our next session. I welcome you all to our next session on Friday. That's a faculty talk and it will be conducted by Dr. Julio Chako Kandatil. And so it's on um, rotator cuff, imaging of a rotator cuff, pearls and pitfall. So I invite everyone for the session. So once again, I thank you all for attending the session. Yeah, time. To, uh, today it was 6.30 actually to, uh, to uh, what is the time for Friday? It is 7 or? Huh? It will be at 7, 7 ma'am. Okay. okay, so all of you be present at 7 o'clock. You will have a wonderful session. Thank you. So I take this opportunity uh, to thank uh, Dr. Thara, our uh, coordinator, uh, Dr. CB, our expert faculty for doing such a wonderful session. I thank the uh, residents, Dr. Amradhan Shrudi, for presenting the cases, and Dr. Soumya for giving us a very good platform without any interruption, and all the residents who were listening to the talk. Thank you, each and every.